My name is Dale Little, Rescue American Ministries, and uh, don't want to run anybody off right here at the start, but uh, just bear with me. I just want to do a, a chorus and a uh, the first verse of the song here, because it kind of deals a little bit with what we're doing here. Well, a lot, I think. Why can't all God's children get along? We can't all be right. We can't all different singers in the same old song. Why can't all God's children get along? Red and yellow, black, brown, and white. We all look the same in the dead of the night. Whooping and hollering. Like to do the whole thing, but like I say, I promised you I wouldn't uh, bore some of you with that. Um, I want to talk a little bit um, today, and I, I started out, uh, this was going to be a very brief, and I'm still going to try my best to keep it as brief as I can, but I uh, just want to talk about the incivility or the uncivil way that we communicate with each other nowadays and by the way um the um uh, the flag uh, needed me a backdrop uh, a little bit I, I don't have uh, maybe somebody give me a big donation i can set up like um uh, uh, todd Friel and wretched if you've ever seen him and his setup <laughs> it's a uh, top notch um and some things i agree with him on some i don't and i'm sure the same way here you know vice versa that's okay just saying he's got a top-notch uh, uh, studio. Uh, I don't have that. So uh, I put the flag up and um, I put it up and I said, well, I got the flag up. Here we are just uh, after um, the 4th, July the 17th. And uh, so I may as well, you know, put my shirt on uh, to go along with it. Uh, so uh, you may not be able to see me. I may be camoufl camouflaged back uh, with the flag there. Uh, but uh, some of you patriots out there, and uh, I'm not saying that others aren't, uh, maybe I should say uh, some of those that really love this country and uh, see the flag um, for what it stands for, not only that um, uh, it's representative of how things are, but it's, uh, it's a, a vision of how things want to, we want things to be. Uh, that's what it stands for. We're not a perfect country. No, it never will be. Uh, there are no perfect nations on this earth because we're all imperfect people. And um, so regardless, until Jesus Christ comes back, and he will one day, and he'll set up his kingdom, and when he sets up his kingdom, it will be a righteous kingdom. But in the meantime, uh, I think he had a lot to do. I think he, this nation would not be here if it had not been for uh, him and for the things that, it, I mean, there were just some things that's too miraculous uh, that this nation should never have existed uh, if had God not, God not intervened, and it wouldn't, you know, have lasted had he not intervened. Uh, many times we've come very close, closer than we realize sometimes to falling. Um, but um, the, uh, so I, I guess, you know, I, I guess I put the flag, you know, it's up there more for um, some of my, I don't want to say liberal friends because they are my friends, and uh, I do have a few, uh, but some of those liberals out there that uh, want to make a, uh, that just uh, go into fits when they see the flag, well, I just kind of wanted to help you out. If you hadn't had your fit yet today, then, you know, uh, you know, this, I provide you that opportunity. So, uh, you know, I'm doing you a service here. Just go ahead and have your fit. And, you know, if you want to foam at the mouth or whatever, because of the, you know, seeing the flag, then, you know, that's okay. Um, then uh, I've helped you out here a little bit. What I want to talk about, though, really, and getting more serious here, is the, uh, how we have become so uncivil um, in this country, not only in this country, but around the world. It's, um, and and uh, <clears throat> I made a statement many times uh, in recent years. Um, some of you still remember, uh, some of you can conveniently forget some of these things, but the hundreds of Russian school children that were killed in Russia uh, several years ago 
uh, by uh, Islamic terrorists came in and set bombs and uh, different things and, and murdered just a, you know so many kids uh, there in that school. And I said then, um, as much as we need to distrust and hold Russia at a, uh, at a distance to some extent, uh, really, if there's any civilized world left, then the civilized world need to come together to fight against this menace of Islamic terrorism, um, any other kind of terrorism for that matter. But um, that seems to be the thing that, uh, I mean, there is no terrorist movement that compares to the size and, and the atrocities and things that's going on uh, committed by Islamic terrorists today. And I said, you know, uh, if there is a civilized world, and, and sometimes I have my doubts, then we should have come together uh, to fight against that evil and that wickedness. The ISIS would never have been, you know, come about. Uh, they wouldn't have had a chance. And so, um, but we've not done it. And we can't get along, you know, even, and, and there again, I wonder if, uh, how, how civil we are. At, if, is there any such thing as a civilized world today? Um, but how do we get to the place that we can't talk and we can't discuss without, um, you know, coming to things? And if you think uh, this started with Donald Trump, then uh, like Rip Van Winkle, uh, you must have been in a deep sleep for some time. Uh, I, I've been on Facebook for at least six or seven years. Uh, I think longer I could have looked back. I didn't uh, see exactly when I got on. And almost from the beginning, I've been called all kinds of names. Uh, simply because I shared my opinion, or even some scripture sometimes. Uh, things that range from, that I've been called, that range from bigot, racist, uh, to more vulgar things. Uh, and although it is without excuse, if you keep throwing rocks or keep shooting uh, at people, the tendency is they will eventually start throwing rocks and shooting back. And so for the last while now, I've seen some on the right using the... Uh, the same tactics and the same vulgar language that the left has been using. And uh, we just need to stop all this. Uh, it never should have started anyway. And, and, you know, looking at how we got to this place, I don't have time to go into all the details. You could write a book probably. But as Christians, we need to do as the Bible says, uh, to speak the truth in love. Uh, when you are called intolerant and hateful, the purpose of that is to try to embarrass you into being quiet. If you're a Christian speaking the truth, that's the purpose that people call you that, um, that you're intolerant and hateful. And so uh, don't let them silence you. And uh, you see uh, my uh, friend Smokey here in the background uh, made his slight appearance. Uh, he's <laughs> moving on now. Um, but... Um, as Christians, we need to do what, like the Bible says, when you're called intolerant and hateful, and that is that we need to speak the truth in love, and uh, don't let them silence you. Uh, just do it in the right spirit, because that's what those terms are meant to be. Uh, when they call you intolerant and hateful, if you're a Christian, and if you're not doing that, if you're just expressing the, the scripture and what God's word teaches, then uh, they're just doing those things. They're hurling those uh uh, they're calling you those things to try to silence you, try to embarrass you, because who wants to be thought of as intolerant and hateful? And that worked for a good while. It's not working so well now. People are getting more bold, and so I don't want to stop you. Just do it in the right manner, in the right spirit. As for the vulgar language, people have watched, uh, I'm afraid, so much HBO and R-rated Hollywood movies for so long, they think that whatever is said by them somehow means it's okay. Uh, if that's where you get your morality, you're really messed up. Uh, what used to be embarrassing no longer raises an eyebrow, uh, you know, to a lot of people now. Uh, now, it, it wasn't just him, but uh, Spike Lee had a lot to do with this and uh, making vulgarities acceptable and uh, things. And, and like I say, I'm not just picking on him himself. Like I say, he wasn't the only one. But he said that the, the squeaky clean TV shows of the 50s and uh, 60s, uh, early 60s were a fantasy and did not represent real life. So he incorporated as much sex and violence and vulgar language as he could get away with in his films. Uh, and he was definitely not alone. He was just more outspoken on the subject uh, and, and made it out there uh, to and put that out there like that. 
The problem was that for many people, Ozzy and Harriet was much closer to the norm for many, um, if not most of us. And that was one of the shows, TV shows that he, you know, mentioned. Well, Ozzy and Harriet wasn't real, you know, it's not real uh, realism. Uh, the sex and the violence and the profanity is what was real to him. And and that was true to some extent, you know, in his life. But to say that Ozzy and Harriet wasn't real, uh, is just as wrong to say that, you know, these other things in his uh, a situation that he grew up in was unreal. Uh, both are true. Um, for me, um, you know, we never had the things. I grew up in a big family of that rule and... Uh, we never had the niceties that even Ozzy and Harriet had, but the family life that I had uh, was much closer to Ozzy and Harriet than, uh, you know, what uh, stuff that Spike Lee puts out. Um, but I'm just saying, you know, that's true for us and true for many. To say that it wasn't true and wasn't real then was a misstatement on his part, just as if I said what he's putting is not real. It's what he's putting is maybe real, uh, you know, and, and it is. Many people live in that environment. Um, but it, um, there is no one-size-fits-all uh, lifestyle uh, that uh, Spike Lee tried to, uh, you know, make it out to be. Uh, and what he grew up in depicted and depicted was just as foreign to many as Ozzy and Harriet was to him. But for him to say they didn't represent real life uh, at all was false. And the thing is, one can tell their story without having to graphically display all the sex and violence or using all the vulgar language. Uh, the same rule is true, true in life. If a person cannot express their uh, displeasure without having to resort to profanity and vulgar language, then to me that only shows their shallowness. Uh, we all should be able to do that. And so that's uh, what I want to encourage today is uh, don't resort to the same name calling and, and the vulgar language and, and things that the, the left has put out there uh, and um, made it so common. And there again, everybody on the left does not do that. Uh, I tried never to make any group of people uh, put a blanket statement and say that they're all the same. Uh, that's a great mistake that we all make sometimes. And uh, uh, we look at one group of people, whether it's racial or whether it's uh, you know otherwise, uh, politics or whatever, and we try to lump everybody into the same category. That's uh, that's wrong. Uh, you know, it's like uh, calling our Republicans, everybody that voted for Donald Trump, deplorable. Um, and so, like I say, this, uh, I, I've been there. I've, I've been around a few years. I, you know, you can probably see that by now <laughs> and recognize that. Um, I've been on Facebook for a number of years. And um, this division... Uh, and especially the racial division even, is not new. It did not start with Donald Trump. And, uh, I mean, it was getting worse almost by the week, way before Donald Trump came on the scene. And a lot of it's perpetrated by the news media and outlets that are uh, intent on putting things out there that are divisive, uh, trying to make a news story. Just, for example, recently, and, and uh, made a point on this on Facebook, that... Uh, uh, where a young black child, uh, and it was, a, it was a horrible thing. Um, she was crying uncontrollably. I, my heart went out to her, I honestly did. It broke my heart about to see her, the pain that this little girl had. She was a little black girl because um, in a daycare somewhere that um, uh, one of the other children said that, you know, she wouldn't play with her or she didn't like them or, or something like that because she's black. Well, you know, it's it, that's wrong. But, you know, we were all children at one time. Do you do, do we not remember that <laughs> kids say hurtful things to each other? Uh, I mean, these are children. And uh, you can try to say that, well, she had to got that from home. No, um, not necessarily. Uh, kids don't have to learn racism. Now, it is learned and it is taught. Um, so I don't mistake what I'm saying there. But I'm saying it doesn't have to be. Uh, it's a part of our fallen nature, and people can disagree with that if you want to. Uh, but uh, according to the Word of God, we're all born with the fallen nature. And um, you don't have to teach a child to be selfish. Um, I mean, if you've ever had to do that, you know, let me know about that. Um, we have to teach them to be unselfish. 
you know, they grab toys from each other. You know, I don't like you because you're you're not like me. You're fat, uh, or or you wear glasses. You're four eyes, and uh, I don't know what other you know kind of things kids say to each other nowadays. But my wife works in a nursery at the church, and uh, you know things like that are going on constantly. It, it, can you imagine someone calling up the uh, news media and telling them that uh, how hurt your little girl is and she's crying because somebody called her fat? Um, they wouldn't be about to touch that. But they did pick up this story and uh, try to use it in an effort basically to show that white people are racist. And, uh, you know, that seems to be the outgoing thing with the news media now. And so, uh, you know, why put that on national news? I'm, yes, the little girl was hurt terribly. And that happens all the time to kids. It was horrible that the other little girl said that. And she needs to be taught that that's not acceptable. They had talked to the dad, and the dad was shocked by what she had said. So, uh, you know, evidently from everybody there, to, uh, the people there, the um uh, nursery, uh, you know, it wasn't something that the dad had taught uh, the girl to do, but they have to be taught. And so, you know, hopefully that'll be a lesson to go from here. And, uh, you know, he can teach that daughter now that that's not acceptable. And so, uh, but to show it out on, on uh, national news media for a national news outlet to pick it up and put it out there and show how these white people are so insensitive uh, is just wrong. All that does is strike a match and, and add flame to the fire. Um, we as adults, that, and that's the more sad thing, it was sad what this little girl went through and what the parent had to you know endure seeing a little girl hurt that way. But what's worse is seeing adults that uh, take it, those things and try to make a big racial issue out of it. Uh, that's, that's even worse. And so uh, that's all I have today. And uh, like I say, I knew it would go over a little bit. I didn't want to keep this real short, but went a little longer than I had intended, but that's okay. Uh, uh, so uh, join us again next time. I'm not sure what we'll look at next, but uh, we'll have something and uh, to share with you. And just wanted to talk about the incivility and look at where it came from. You know, we need to look at the Bible. If you're a child of God, that's where we need to get our bearings from. Not from the Hollywood, not from the news media, more to God. Thank you.